Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a very happy new year to you all. Um, today we're going to start the year by looking at a puzzle by the brilliant constructor Akash Jain. Akash of course was one of the co-authors of our recent Sudoku hunt and today I'm delighted to tell you we have published the video explaining that hunt. So if you're a patron of the channel um, on Patreon uh, then do go over there and have a look at that video. I'll let you into no secrets by saying that that video is three hours 20 minutes long I think which gives you an idea of how much material there was in that hunt. Absolutely stupendous it was and fantastic that so many of you managed to battle your way through it. Um, now this puzzle also actually has quite a rule set. Um, I've even extended my screen today so I'm going to try and make sure I've got enough room on the right hand side to include all the rules. But the reason we're going to try it, even though it's got a dense rule set, is because the testing reports are that this is sensational. And it happens to be a hybrid of one of my favourite types of logic problems, um, something called a Nurikabi and Killer Sudoku. So I am very anxious to try this one, I can tell you. Um, now, anything else to mention? Yes, I have a few things. Uh, we released a bonus video earlier today, a crossword video, no less. Um, this is by the constructor Morph, and it's rather cool because basically every single clue in the puzzle references a real news event from 2020. Now, 2020 was a year many of us are quite glad to see the back of, but um, I have to say the cryptic clues were very, very fine, and it's definitely worth checking out if you have any interest at all in cryptic crosswords. Um, what else to mention? Do have a look at our new Killer Sudoku app. Um, still getting some lovely reviews and that is really gratifying. And I, I, well, I can tell you the puzzles in that app are, are frankly, they are beyond belief. Um, anything else going on? Well, today, of course, it's the 1st of January, which means it's the first of a month as well as of a year. And that means we've released our monthly bonus puzzle on Patreon as well. That should be live by the time this video goes up. So lots and lots of bonus things going on today. Right, now let's get to the rules of Akash's puzzle. What's going on with this one? So if you're used to Nurikabi, this won't seem too bad. If you've never seen a Nurikabi puzzle, strap yourselves in because this <laughs> is going to blow your mind. <laughs> right, normal Sudoku rules apply. That bit's easy. Then we've got to shade cells using the following rules. Do not shade cells containing digits in their top left corner. OK, well, that's simple enough. Um, the digit in the cell with a number in their top left corner gives the number of contiguous white cells um, in that area. So i.e. it represents a Nurikabi clue. So what does that mean? Well, let's imagine this square had a three in it. That would mean that there would need to be three connected squares in this white area, three orthogonally connected squares, so those are not connected for this purpose. Those three squares, for example, could form um, a Nurikabi area. Um, a base, so this digit, if it was four, then we'd have to have a four cell area. So we're basically building little killer Sudoku type cages using these numbers in the top left corners. Yeah, so the number in the top left corner also equals the sum of all the digits in that white area and numbers cannot repeat within a white area. So yeah, these are forming killer clues. No two different areas of white cells can share an edge, though they can touch at a point. OK, so that means that let's imagine the six clue went to there. If the 10 clue started to come this way, it now couldn't take this square and it couldn't take this square because then the six and the ten clues would be connected along a whole edge. Here, they connect just at this point, and that's okay. But the moment the ten went there, for example, that would be broken. So we mustn't do that. Um, the shaded cells are all orthogonally connected, but cannot be linked in a two by two square or larger. Okay, so this is again, this is very standard Nurikabi, which means that once we've worked out which cells are the shaded cells, we can't. Although they all have to be connected to each other around the grid, let's say we'd for oh no, just messed that up straight away. Let's say we'd managed to work out logically they were in these positions, then we would know for sure this cell here could not be also shaded because if it is shaded, we get a two by two region of shaded cells, and we must avoid that. And all the Nurikabi clues have been given. Right, so that means all of these clues are sufficient 
Well, these are basically specifying all the white areas in the grid. Um, now, because sometimes, well, I don't know what that means. I think we're going to have to think about that. It's not immediately obvious to me what, what it means. What it's making me think about, frankly, are these two blocks over here. Because we've got to make sure that there are no 2x2 two two shaded regions in these two 3x3 three three blocks. So anyway, that's what that makes me think. I don't know if it's relevant. We're told to note the inequality sign in the grid. That's this this inequality sign here. So that's telling us this cell has to be this cell has to be greater than this cell. Also note that unlike in normal killer Sudoku, the cell with the number in the top left corner may not be the leftmost cell of the highest row of that white area. Ah, good grief. Okay. So normally we would know, for example, with the 17 clue, that it could never take this cell. If, because we can't, if it took this cell, the 17 should be in the top left hand most cell of the cage. Here, no such rule applies. So I've got no idea how that impacts the solve, but we'll have to work it out. Now I've just remembered that Akash provided an example of this and I have forgot to snip that. So let me just pause and I will snip it. One sec. Okay, so this is an example puzzle. It's just a six by six rather than a nine by nine, but this might help us to understand how the rule set works. So let's go through this. We've got, probably we should go through this quite slowly. <laughs> um, so the first thing I can see is that each white region is indeed summing up to the clue in its top left corner cell. So even though this isn't, you know, this six isn't the top left hand most corner of its white area, it's still, you can see that this six is still indicating the sum of the white area. Two plus four equals six, two plus eight equals, two plus six equals eight, four plus two plus one plus five equals 12, etc. We can also see that all of the gray cells are orthogonally connected to one another and none of them form a two by two region. Ah, yeah, okay, and we can also see that the cell that, or the digit that's appearing in the cell that has the top left corner clue, so for example, this 12 has a four in it, that four is specifying the size of the white area. So this is a four size area. This is a three, it's got three cells in it. This one's got four cells in it. This one's got two cells in it. This one's got two cells in it. I see, I see, I can do this, I think. Um, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful idea. So that's that. Let's, let's get rid of this. How do I get rid of it without the whole machine crashing? I just do that. There we go. We're here. So do have a go. The way to play, click the link under the video. And with that, let's get cracking. So the first thing I see when I see this grid, and I know this might be just um, because I'm very used to Nurikabi logic, is that Let's look at these two cells, which are diagonally adjacent. Now, we know that these two cells are going to form so-called white areas, although I might shade them in, actually. Um, it's going to be easier for me if I shade them. I'll make them, I'll make them blue, actually. I'll use blue and orange because that seems to be the colors that are most colorblind friendly. So blue cells are going to be the sort of islands that we're going to build. And then we're going to watch, we'll make orange the cells that are going to be the ones I need to connect to each other. So you can see immediately here, this, this square cannot be blue. This square cannot be blue because if either of these squares is blue, it's connecting the 17 region with the 10 region, which is not going to work. And you can see that we've got lots of instances of that, or I can see three instances of that in the grid already. So we can do this straight away now right well we know all of the oranges need to connect to each other so that one must be orange the blue the blue we don't know well in fact we do know the blue is not connecting to it, it to other bits of blue but we know that a 19 cage must be at least three cells large so this square must also be blue Uh, this hasn't actually got us very far, has it? Oh, there's some Nurikabi we can do. This square, this square can't be blue because if this is blue and the 10 cage is starting to build out this way, 
Where would the 22 cage's next cell be? It can't be here, that would connect to the 10 cage, and it can't be here, that would also connect to the 10 cage. So this square must be orange. And that means that, yeah, you can't put, we can't put 10 in this cell, so the 10 must come out at least one cell. Oh, this is lovely. This is absolutely lovely. Oh, that's another Pablo armchair puzzle hunt thing. I better just read it and let's not worry about that. Um, now, this orange has to connect to its friends. Uh, it now can't get out through row one, so it's got to come out down the side. This 17 can't, must be at least two cells. Oh, no. Well, yes. <laughs> I was just thinking... It can't just be two cells though, because if it's just two cells, we would have to put a two in there. And that would imply this square is a 15, which is not possible. There's a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic for you. So this must be at least three. Actually, maybe I should put in the possibilities here. Four or five. It can't be, it can't be six, because a six cell region with different digits in each cell would have, add up to at least 21. So a 10 cell, or a 10 clue must be 2, 3, or 4. Oh, but I've got to avoid a 2 by 2 orange region. So if this square is not, if this square is orange, that will also be orange. And because we know all Nurikabi clues have been given, and that will break the puzzle. So this square must be blue. So in fact, this is not 2, this must be 3 or 4. This one's still got to get out. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else to do now. Probably what I need to do is to label some of these up. So that can be two, three, or four. Nineteen. That can be three, four, or five. I think it's the same as the seventeen. Less than eight. <laughs> um, right, so that's, I suppose that could be a one. That could just be a one. So one less than eight. So it can't be more than three cells because a four cell clue would add up to at least 10. One plus two plus three plus four. 22. 22, that's interesting. 22 can't start with a three because if it was a three cell clue, the other two squares would have to add up to 19, which won't work. So it must be 4, 5, or 6. Although, that's lovely as well, it can't be 6. Why can't it be 6? Well, if it was 6, if this square was 6, it would be saying we need to find 6 cells that add up to 22. Now, although there are 6 cells that add up to 22, and those digits would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7, none of those is a 6. So in fact, 6 is impossible there. So this one is getting restricted. This is four or five. So if I could get that one down a bit. Um, don't know. Uh, now, six clue. Well, it can't be one because one is not equal to six. There's another knowledge rocket. So it must be two or three. This one's two, three, or four again. All of the ten clues are two, three, or four. Um, the twenty-nine. Gosh, that seems to have a lot of options. It could be, I suppose. Oh no, it can't be four, because the only way of making four cells add up to twenty-nine is with five, seven, eight, nine. So it's not four. So it's five, six, seven. Is seven possible? Oh, this is this is another interesting choice of digit here. Seven is not possible because if this was a seven cell region with different digits, if we know and we do know this that the numbers di one to nine, if you add up all the digits from one to nine, you get forty five. So if a seven cell region adds up to twenty nine, what are the two digits that are missing from that seven that that seven cell region have to add up to? Well, they have to add up to the difference between 45 and 29. They have to add up to 16. So they have to be 7 and 9. Well, that's a paradox, because 7 definitely can't be in the cage then if the two digits outside the cage would need to be 7 and 9. So that can't be 7. 
which isn't really that helpful, but it's something. Um, right. So now what do we do? <laughs> um, I don't know. Ah, ah, I've got something. This cell, rather beautifully, cannot be a four. Because if it's a four, we now know that the digits one, two, and three are going to have to appear somewhere in this cage in row one. Well, if there's a one, two, and three somewhere up here, that square can't be a two or a three. Um, so that doesn't work. So this square must be three. And it's already got three. So the rest, so it must be surrounded by orange. Therefore, that's not three. Ah, ah, now that does give us a, that does give us a four or five pair. I looked at this as a, a possibility earlier, but I was looking at this cell to eliminate the possibility of the three here, whereas actually it was this cell that did it. So this is a four or five pair. This is not four anymore, which means we've got a two, three pair in this box. Right, okay, so this square's orange. In fact, we can make all of these squares blue, of course, but this square must be orange. And the reason for that is that we know one of these three squares must be orange. Because if none of these are orange and they're all blue, these two clues are connected to each other. And given one of these is orange, at least one of them is orange, that orange has to connect with all its friends in the grid. So it has to come through that little, this sort of gateway that's been created. Right, so now what do we do next? We don't have a clue. Um, so what do we know about the puzzle? One of those two squares has got to be blue at least because otherwise that will be a two by two of orange. Ah, well, I've got something. It's not, it's not huge, but this square can't be orange. And the reason this square can't be orange is now how do I keep these two clues apart? This has to be at least four. So let's try and keep it apart from this square. It can take this one, it can take this one, and it can take that one. And that's all it can take without touching this. But the problem with this is, of course, this square is now orange and this orange is not connected to its friends. So we can't, we can't sort of corral these two clues into a small area. So that's got to be blue. That means this one's got to come out. That's got to be orange. That means, yes, this has to come down. This is at least a four cell clue. So that's got to come down again. Uh, oh, oh, now this has to get out. How does this orange connect to the rest of the grid? Well, a bit like over here, it's got to come through this gate. Um, so that's got to be orange. And now it's getting very tricky up here, isn't it? So I've got to avoid this being a two by two. So it can either do that with this being blue or this and then those two would have to be blue. Ah, so that would finish. We'd have to go, the six clue would have to be three. It would have to go one, two, three along there. Is there anything wrong with that? Uh, that, that, was what, that would have to be blue. Two, three, what's those squares? Ah, no, this doesn't, ah, this is important. This three here limits the value of these two squares. Because what can these be? These have to add up to seven and they can't be three and four. So these can be one, six or two, five. Now that's critical because that in both of those options, you had to use a one or a two. Now that has an impact, I think, over here in terms of how we avoid creating 
um, a 2x2 two two orange blockade here. So one way I was looking at was whether this square could be blue and part of this. Well, let's look at that now and establish why it doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is that this square would have to be a 3 and these would have to be a 1 and a 2 in order to add up to 6. So we'd have 1, 2, 3 in this row and obviously therefore we can't put a 1 or a 2 in this domino here. So, so this square cannot, well it could be blue, but it, no it can't be blue. This square just can't be blue because this square can't reach it. If this square reached it, this would be hemmed in. So this square is orange, which means this square is blue to avoid a 2 by 2. The orange has to get out. This blue has to get out. It's at least 4. That forces the orange down again. That forces the blue down again. That forces the orange down again. Good grief. Um, now... What do we do? The, the cell that's catching my eye is this one now. Because this square here, if it's blue, well, it can't belong to this blue, because if it does, this orange is hived off on its own. It can't belong to this blue, because if all of those three are blue, again, this orange is cut off from the rest of the grid. So the only, th it could, oh, could it belong? Ah, maybe it can belong to that one. Oh, bobbins. No, yes. Oh, it's tricky though. Ah, three. No, it can't. It can't work. This doesn't work. It, it, the reason that this doesn't connect with this is that you can see this clue now has to be a three, which means how do we make um, a three cell clue add up to a number that's less than eight? Well, these would have to be a one, two pair. Now, the problem with that is that this clue is now broken because this clue has to be three. And what are you going to put in this square? It has to be Oh. No, oh, goodness me, this is really complicated. I was suddenly suddenly thinking maybe it could be the digit that's not here, but it can't be the digit that's not here either. So this is two, this is one, this does have no fill. That's complicated. I accept that's complicated, but it was visu vis visualizable, if that's even a word. So what that means is that this square is not blue and it is orange. Now you can see that means this square must be blue to avoid a two by two. This square has to get out, so that's got to be orange. Um, Does that mean anything else? The answer is I'm not sure. This square, I mean, if that square is blue, don't know. I feel like there's probably more work we can do up here. But I, I want to have a look down here now because we've done uh, made a lot of progress I've not really thought about. And this one as well. Oh, we still don't know what that is. Um, four, five here. Two, three, four here. Four, five. Oh, I'll tell you one thing that's interesting. This cell is interesting. This cell is very interesting because this square cannot be orange. Because if it's orange, these will also have to be orange because all Nurikabi clues have been given. And if all of those are orange, we have a 2x2 two two orange region. So this square has to be blue. Now, that is fascinating because it can't be part of the 17. The 17 is a maximum size of 5. And if it takes that square, it's going to be at least 6. So this is now orange. This blue must connect. 
So this is not a two clue anymore. And oh, and now this has to get out. So all of those have got to be orange. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now look here. This orange region, which has take, taken the whole of column one, has to get out. So that's got to be orange. Oh, we don't know about this square yet. Uh, we don't, do we know what this 10 is? This 10 could be three. If it's four, it's got to take that cell, which would force this to come up. Oh, here's a nice bit of logic. One of these is a five. So either this is blue or this is blue. Well, whichever one of these is blue, it must then end and be, so that this square must be orange. So it must mark the end of either this region or this region. We know one of these regions will be a five cell region. That, of course, is useless. Um, three. Golly. Um, how long have I had? Oh, well, I think I only started at about eight minutes in, so not too long yet. Got to get this region out. I feel like I should be able to deduce something more about this. What is it that's, this is a three. Does that, maybe I've got to do Sudoku somehow. Is that what I'm missing here? Um, if this is two, one of this, ah, if this is two, because this square is in, this would have to be a four. And that would mean this square was orange. This square would have to be blue. I can't see what's wrong with that. It would sort out this domino as well. If this is three, it has to take this square. Both of those would have to be orange then because this would be orange and it would need to get out. Oh, more Pablo things. <laughs> um, so th if this was three, this would be two. This would have to be an eight. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not seeing what's wrong with that either. So I don't think we'd quite know how to resolve this top right piece of the puzzle. We're going to have to think harder about some other piece of it. And which piece is that going to be? Um, I haven't got a clue. It would be very, very helpful to know which of these was a four and which of these was a five. I've got five. Oh, I've got eight in here. That's not right. Three. These have to add up to seven. So they're either one, six or two, five. Not, not <laughs> whatever eight was doing in there. I don't think that's, I've used this clue at all though. So I don't think that's, that's what's holding me up, unfortunately. Um, Oh, of course, if this is three, we have to put one, two and three in this box. So this would not have a value. That's it. If this is three, it's really obvious as soon as I've thought about it in the right way. But I've got to now put one and two into those two squares. And this square has no possible fill. So this is two, this is four, this is orange. We must avoid a two by two. So this is blue. 
This is a three clue actually. This two means that this we, we can rule out two five from those squares. This becomes one six. Ah, no, that doesn't help us. This square, do we know whether this is orange or blue? Don't know, this square here. So we know that we've got three in our 10 cage. We need seven more. So we can't use three and four. So it's exactly the same as up here. We've got one, six or two, five. Oops. So this can't be two, there's a two in the box. And if this was blue, no, if this is blue, it doesn't work. If this is blue, let's look at that. We know these two have to add up to seven. So given the options here, this either has to be one, six or two, and it can be none of those digits. So this square is orange, this is blue, this square it now has to be one, six or two. Those two can be finished off. Avoid a two by two, that square's got to be blue. This orange region has to get out, so this square's, <laughs> this square comes out. This orange has to get out. Oh, I was about to say the blue has to get out, that's total nonsense. This can't be a one anymore because this is two cells large. Um, okay. Has this revealed something to me that's useful? I have no idea. Um, This is really tricky. This is really tricky, but, but it is really interesting. And therefore, I have no problem with it being difficult. Um, well, no, let me correct that. The problem I have is with my own brain. It's not with the puzzle. Come on, brain, wind yourself up and work. What is it you're meant to be spotting here that's going to finish this puzzle off? Is there a restriction on this column? Five, one, two. It gets very interesting actually if this square is a five. Yeah, let's look at that. If this is a five, these we get a one, two, three, six quadruple. Ah, got it. That's it. That's it. This can't be five. Because if this is five. What do we have to fill these four squares with? Well, these four squares have to add up to 12 without using five. So they have to be one, two, three, and six. Oh my goodness, what happened there? Uh, let me just show you, one, two, three, and six. Now, those four squares are now one, two, three, six, quadruple. So what option do we have available to us for this square here? Well, we can't use a digit as high as a seven because once we use the minimum digit for this cell, will have no value for this cell here. So we have to use four. But the moment we use four, it's broken because the four fixes the size of the 10 cage as a three cell cage. Now I've got to make this square equal to three to make the, the cage work. And that repeats the three in the row, in the cage, and everything goes wrong. So that does not work. And that means that this little square here is a four and not a five. And that means that one's the five, which means that one turns blue. This one turns orange. Avoid a two by two. Oh, so that becomes a blue, which means that this is of size four, which I wasn't expecting, to be honest. That means that's orange. These squares have got to be one, two, and three to make the 10 cage work. That square, this square is a three. It's not a five or a four anymore. So that's a three, which means that must be a seven or a nine because the other two cells are going to add up to 16. Um, that means that's not a three, look. Ah, we can get the three. That three means that this is not a three. So the three goes here. 
The, oh, look, this orange bit hasn't yet got out. It's very large, but it hasn't connected to its friends yet, so it has to take that one. So maybe this is now restricted, is it? So we've got a four in the 17 cage. So these three squares add up to 13, but they can't use three and they can't use four. Right, okay, so they must use either one or two. They can't use both one and two because then we'd have to use 10 as the other digit. And they can't not use either one and two because five, six, seven adds up to more than 13. So if it's a one in here, we'd have to use one, five, seven. And if it's a two, we'd have to use two, five, six. Oh, so there's always a five. There's always a five in this triple. But unfortunately, five is absolutely useless. Um, oh, sorry about that. I thought that would be interesting, but I'm not sure that it is. So maybe we've got to... Oh, don't tell me I've got to use this one, do I? Do I have to... Oh yeah, here we go. This is a six. This is a six. It's beautiful, actually. It's beautiful. Let's think about what what job does this twenty nine has to have to have to do? Well, it's it's really got a prodigious amount of work to do because it has to prevent so many two by twos forming, and there are a number. So for the first one, it's got to deal with is that that cannot be a two by two. So this 29 has to occupy at least one of these two squares. But look, nothing else in the grid can get to this two by two either because the 19 cage now is only three cells large. So it gets as close as this. It can't interfere with this two by two. So the, the, the job of interference needs to be done by the 29. So it's got to do one here, one here, at least one here. Now, Look at those two squares. This domino here is part of a potential two by two that cannot be interfered with by this eight, it can't get to it, or this 19, which can't get to it. So one of these two cells also needs to be interfered with by the 29. Now, this is now a real problem because the 29 has to get to there, one, to there, two. It's already in this square, three, and it's got to get one of these four and it's got to connect back to itself five six it could come across here as well five six but it must be six it can't do all of that work if it's only five that oh lovely that fixes that this is not one six going with the three so we can actually get the digit we get a five and a two that fixes this one as a three sudoku gives us a five up here Three. Well, ah, here we go. This is this is amazing logic. It's it's just such beautiful use of the constraint. Once this is three again, we actually know now the size of this cage. This has got to be a six cage. It can't be a seven cage because you can't have one, two, and f well, a seven cage in three cells would be one, two, and four, which definitely doesn't have a three in it. So this is adding up to six. So this square can't be blue. Because if this square is blue, these two squares are a one-two pair and that clashes. So this square is orange, which means this square is blue, this square is orange, this square is blue because we need to avoid the two by two. This square is now needs to keep, well, we know this is now taking this cell, which means this square is orange to keep them apart. The blue, this blue has to get back to the six somehow. This three cell region is now finished, so surround it with orange. This orange here needs to get out, so it's going to have to come through the gate, so that's orange. This six needs to stop this two by two, so this becomes a blue. 
Right, now look, now look, we've actually got all sorts. So now look at these three squares. These are all orange. <laughs> I know I'm just telling you the absolutely bleeding obvious to quote Sybil Faulty, but these are all orange. So there are actually two potential two by twos here. There's this one and this one. Well, I've only got a maximum of one digit I can contribute. I've got one, two, three, four. I've got to somehow connect this back here and I've got to deal with the problem here. So you can see this cell is going to have to be blue to prevent these two by twos. I can't, I can't afford two blues in this row. And that allows us to just finish us off here with a sort of pistol shaped region of size six and fill in the rest of the oranges. And that I think is, well, the solution to the Nurikabi part of what is a beautiful problem. Um, now, have we learnt enough about the puzzle? Yeah, well, we know what we know that, that region must be filled with a one and a two, and the two up here tells us the order. Neither of these is a two now. Um, this has got to be a seven or a nine. Ah, maybe we should look at this 22 cage. Actually, I can pencil fours into those as well. But I'm just, there's a few things going on here, actually. There are a few things going on. Um, but looking at the 22 cage for a moment, it can't contain a four. And I don't think it can contain a three either because of these threes. So those four squares have to add up to 17 without using three, four, or five. Which means they must have one and two in them, doesn't it? Because if they don't have one and two in them, they've got to have a minimum of six, seven, eight, and six, seven, and eight already add up to more than 17. So that we know there's a one and a two in, in this, this box, in this cage somewhere. There's no two in this bit. Oh, there's no one here, and there's no one here because one is greater, one would have to be greater than this square, so I'd have to make this square zero, which won't work. So this is actually a one-two pair now. <laughs> this was so clever. And now these add up to eight, so these add up to 14 without repeating five, so these are six and eight, and we know which is larger. So we get the eight, we get the six. That's not six anymore. Um... One, two pair in this column. Uh, what else? Three? Oh, yes, that's a three. That's quite nice for this column as well, actually, because now I've got, yeah, I've only got three digits left to find. So this column has got one, two, three, four, six, eight, it needs five, seven, and nine. That can't be five because of the five here. This can be anything. This, ah, this, oh, this one can't be seven or nine. This is five. Ah, it's not quite as good as I was hoping. It gets us a digit. It gets us a digit here as well by Sudoku using these two fives. That's not five anymore. Five. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, we know, we know one of those is a five, so the five must go here. And, right, what else do we know? Do we know anything else that's useful? Six now. Six must be in one of those two cells, look. So six must be in one of these three squares. Uh, sorry about this. I'm sure we know more things as well. I just can't work out what they are. Um, one. Ah, look, these two one, well, this pencil mark of ones and this one here mean there's a one in one of those two positions. 
That means there's a one in one of these two positions. That is useless. Bobbins. Um, what am I missing here? That can't be a one because of the one there. Oh dear, are we grinding to another halt? Um, fives, threes, one. Oh, okay, sorry, there's something very simple. Look, this square can't be one, because if it's one, you have to put a one there, and there's no, poss no way you can put a one in any of these squares. These are three, two, and five. So if you were to put a one here and a one here, you've broken the puzzle. So don't break the puzzle. Those have got to be twos. That's a one. This is a one. That one fixes a one over here. Oh, this one fixes a one and the six up there. Six has now got to appear in one of these squares by Sudoku. Therefore it gets fixed in box eight down there, look. There's no one. Ah, okay, this is interesting. There's no one now in in this run of cells, so there must be a two in it. We've looked at this already. This has to be two, five, and six, and we can place all three of them. There's only one position for the two, one position for the six, one position for the five. Five has got to be in one of these two squares. Six has got to be, ah, oh, beautiful. Look at the sixes. So six has got to be in one of those three. Well, it can't be here because of the Sudoku. And it can't be there because that's in the same cage as that six. So that's six, that's a six. Six, oh, we get a one, oh, look at this. We get a one six pair in this box, which is resolved. One six, we get the six here as well. And suddenly we seem to be making better progress. I really wish I hadn't said that, but it is true. Um, in fact, have we done all the sixes? Yes, we have. Well, how are we doing with ones? We're doing okay with ones, but we haven't got them. Oh, why haven't I got a one in here? Surely I can get a one in this. Yeah. Yeah, look, there must be a one in one of those two cells. So there must be a one here in the 29 cage. And there's a one in one of those two cells as well. So twos, how are we doing with twos? We are doing well, but not... Ah, that's interesting. We are doing well, but unless I'm missing something, I can't put two in this cage anymore. I can't put five in the cage either. Hang on, is that right? Two, let me just double check twos. I definitely can't put a two in there. Five seems to be pencil marked. Yeah, I can't put five in there either. So I should be able to work out what's in this cage. It's a six cell cage that doesn't have a two or a five in it. And we know that the three digits not in the cage add up to 16. So they must be two, five, and nine. So I now know what goes in the cage. It's every other digit. So the digits that go in the cage are, th uh, oh, hang on. The digits that go in the cage are three, four, seven, and eight. And we know that this one isn't three because I found the three. Yeah, there's a three in one of, by Sudoku, we know there's a three in one of these two cells. This can't be four, look, because of the four there. This can't be four because of the four here. Can we get any more traction from this? Here's a nice bit of logic. Can this square be four? The answer's no, because if it's four, I'd have to put four there by Sudoku. And I can't put four in any of those squares. And if this can't be four, I get a seven, eight pair in the weird cage, remove seven and eight from these two squares, and I get the three into this square. I get the four into this square. Four's in one of those squares. Three is placed now. These threes operate on box six. They give me a three here. They give me the five. That gets me the five down there as well. 
threes must now nearly be done nearly uh yes yes we can place a three here which is going to give us the one it gives us the one there now i think we've done yeah we've done all the ones have we done all the t no we still not got done all the twos um but we can get the two in box nine now it's just got to go here that gives us the two over here that gives us the two here and now i've done all the twos um all right let's look at fours oh no i haven't got many fours at all don't know ah but i can get there's a four in one of those squares so that fixes the four in box two I can get the four here by Sudoku as well. So now all of a sudden I'm up to six fours. Seven fours once I get that one. Eight fours, nine fours, done all the fours. Fives, one, uh, fives are done. Sixes, I think with sixes we're done. So, oh. So am I just down to sevens, eights and nines now? It seems so. So every other cell in the grid I don't know if I can just click now. I better not do that. I think I better highlight them carefully and then we look at them. Every cell I have not pencil marked has to be seven, eight, or nine. Now, what do we know about any of these? We know we've got an eight in this one. So this has got to be a seven or a nine. This can't be eight. This can't be eight. We've got a seven nine pair in this row, so that is an eight over here. Which means this is seven nine, which means ah, this is eight now. That gives us a seven nine pair here. So this one is eight now. I'll get rid of that eight. That's not eight. That's not eight. Bingo. Now look here. Where does eight go in box three? It's got to be in one of these squares. Where does eight go in box six? Well, I don't know. Oh, I do in fact know it's not here. So in fact, let's just do it easily. There's an eight in one of those two. So this has to be the eight in box three. And now this has to be the eight in box nine. Once, oh, now this, this might crack it, I think. Seven, nine will go in. That's a nine. Um... What's that done for me? Ah, this. let's not repeat a digit in a box. So that's got to be an eight. That's a seven. That's a nine. That's a seven. This is a nine. Seven, eight go in by Sudoku. Seven, nine go in by Sudoku up there. Seven, nine go in by Sudoku. That's got to be nine. That fixes the nine and the seven, the seven and the eight. And this is what I'd submit. Yes. What a brilliant puzzle that is. That is just mesmerizing. Akash, I absolutely love that. Um, it's so clever. I really hope you make another one of these because this has got legs for me. Once you, you know, if you're familiar with Nurikabi, the rule set is absolutely fine. It's just beautiful. Um, I'm, just, I'm just scanning the grid to check I've got no two by two oranges. I don't think I do. I think this this looks it felt good, didn't it? It felt like it was it was correct. So happy new year to everybody. I hope you enjoyed the puzzle just even a little bit as much as I did. And we'll be back later of course with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>